So we're here at BITU in Geneva, and I'm very pleased to be joined by Frank van der Putten, who's a rapporteur on question four on broadband access over metallic conductors, and this in the context of study group 15 on transport access in home. Frank, welcome, and thank you very much indeed for joining us here today. Thank you. So study group 15 is very well known for its DSL standards, and it's also well known for you know, breathing new life into copper access technologies uh, through uh, GFAST. Uh, it's also the 20th anniversary of question four. Could you please provide our viewers with uh, an overview, a history of uh, study group uh, 15 and question four, and also uh, you know, what, why it was so successful? Well, we started in 97, so 20 years ago indeed. And so in the early days, uh, we were working on, on ADSL, which was just the next step of voice band modems, earlier work of the ITU. And we were taking like uh, the speed of the services like to a few megabits per second. Uh, it took a uh, few years to finalize this work, but quickly we stepped up to, to VDSL and uh, we spent our time on how can we like uh, say, make the speed times 10 and VDSL went into the several tens to, to 200 of, of megabits. We're still working on VDSL enhancements uh, today. Uh, after VDSL, we went into GFAST, which is more uh, recent. So say most of our time we've spent on ADSL and VDSL. In the very early days, well, basically there was nothing. People were on, on voice band modems, and, but quickly there was ramp up. Uh, in the marketplace, we clearly like uh, found uh, how to bring uh, the internet to, to to millions of people. Uh, like today, we must be like approaching a billion uh, of people using uh, the broadband uh, services or the uh, say the inter interface definitions as provided by the ITUT. So we're very proud of our 20 years and what we have achieved and, and brought to the world. Mm -hmm. um, I'd also like to talk to you about your new GFAST standards. Uh, could you please explain you know, some of the key features of GFAST and what are some of the benefits towards uh, both operators and consumers? So GFAST uh, was conceived like to be uh, next generation from VDSL, uh, so being uh, in a shorter distance to the, to, to the residents, uh, let's say, uh, increasing the uh, data rates to like a gigabit. A gigabit was like, uh, say, three, four years ago, that was like the magic number. So magic numbers go up like uh, every now and then. And so we were thinking about how can we do this? And so uh, together with uh, several deployment scenarios, so operators brought their contributions uh, to the ITUT, say, well, there is interest in something like this, uh, so please think about uh, what can be done. So it has taken us quite a while to get to a first version, like say end of 2014, we, we brought something like uh, one gig uh, GFAS deployment. We also have to think uh, about how we were making it better than VDSL from the, the sense of the robustness, uh, we're using wider spectrum, uh, having to work with the ITUR for the reasons of uh, say interference into to other services. Uh, we've worked on several protocols improvements compared to VDSL, but the first version is, well, it is a few years old, so recently we've even been adding more improvements to this, like taking it up to not only the twisted pairs, but taking it into coax, taking it into say 200 megahertz wide spectrum. And so now we're at two gigabits per second speed. Uh, so that's where we are now. Mm -hmm. And uh, how are industry players uh, applying this standard and this technology in their new uh, business models? Um, various uh, deployment scenarios exist for GFAST. Like, um, the first one that was really taking like, we need something that we can put up in small boxes like up electricity poles or in manholes in the ground. Um, really in the scenario of uh, something that enables fiber to the home, but is just not yet fiber to the home. There being too much, uh, too much, be too much expensive for uh, say, uh, digging front yards or drilling the walls of your house. Uh, so bringing the fiber, like say, to the very close to, to, to the house, uh, that was the original target. So that we're talking like uh, maybe we're going to reach like 50 meters or 100 meters max. Uh, but even then, that showed to be somewhat too expensive. So the other scenario is then, okay, can we replace VDSL with GFAST at the cabinet? Uh, then you need bigger boxes, but 
also that was possible with GFAST. Um, so now we're going back to the original intent, but slowly, like uh, doing, doing higher speeds and, and all this. Uh, but in the recent additions that we did to, uh, to GFAST, we also took uh, COAX uh, into account. Uh, in the sense that now we also address the use case of GFAST overlaying on the same coax in, in like MDU deployments with, with, with satellite distribution uh, in, in apartment buildings. Uh, so that's, uh, that's a new uh, use case uh, that we are addressing or have addressed in our very recent uh, updates to the work. And uh, something new that we're looking into how we can address it is like backhaul and front haul in the context of uh, mobile and wireline convergence. And so there we need to look at what can we do, how we can we improve uh, to, to, to get into the, the low latency uh, space. And so that's ongoing work. And so the uh, front hole, back hole is yet another use case for GFAST. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, talking about speeds, uh, wh when GFAST was first released in 2014, uh, people thought we'd maybe reached the theoretical limit, if you will. But just last year, you proved everyone wrong and doubled the speed. Um, what can we expect uh, in the years to come? Uh, can we triple it, quadruple it? Uh, I don't know if you can make such a prediction, but just to give an idea of the future direction of uh, the group's work. Yeah, when we started G.Fast, including myself, we thought, w shouldn't we call this G.Last? <laughs> but we proved ourselves wrong, including proved myself wrong in that, uh, okay, one gig was like a magic number four years ago. Uh, now the magic number is 10 gig. So we really need to think about, can we really do 10 gig on a copper wire or a coax or what? Even by doing higher frequencies or new technologies, new possibilities, really explore like uh, a broad thinking exercise uh, and so we started a new project that we uh, named uh, g.mg fast uh, we we set the uh, the target for getting a recommendation out pretty far out in the sense that yeah we all understand that this is going to be new silicon for all the vendors and all this so we really need to think from scratch and uh, but okay we gotta start now we have learned over our 20 years that it takes like two three years to get anything from uh, initial thoughts to to say availability of, of, of silicon so with with that experience we have to start thinking about this although we just have really only started uh, thinking about how we can do this. So there is quite some work ahead, but we're getting quite good input and contributions and all this. So it seems like the thinking is ramping up and people are interested, always interested, of course, to think about the next great thing. Uh, but it's going to be a while. So for the deployments, we really also have to focus on can we make GFAST more deployable and better? And so, so we have to mm -hmm. keep working on the improvements of GFAST and at the on the new technology at the same time. So we're pretty busy still after 20 years in Q4. We're still not done answering the question how you do broadband on metallic conductors. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, looking at your body of work, it's clearly not G dot last. Um, so it's G fast and getting faster, and I look forward to seeing how much faster it can even get. Um, so, Frank, I'd like to thank you for your time and uh, wish you a successful uh, study group meeting. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you.